In this video, I will give a brief description of the static and dynamic libraries in linking, and why we use dynamic linking. You will find both the costs and benefits of the dynamic linking. When we write a program in languages such as C, C++, etc., generally we don't write everything ourselves from scratch. Rather than reinventing the wheel, we take advantage of other software components that are already available. So, what happens is, we write our programs in such a way that some part of it will be original codes of ourselves and the rest will simply be the reuse of some pre-compiled program modules. These reusable pre-compiled modules are available either in the form of standard libraries, supplied by the creators of the compilers themselves or some third-party libraries. And, of course, we may also have libraries written and compiled by ourselves. There are two types of libraries, static or statically linked libraries and dynamic or dynamically linked libraries. The static or statically linked libraries are collections of executable modules which can be linked during compile time to make a standalone executable file. In this case, linking means attaching identical copies of the modules from the library to the main module that we write and make a new executable program. It is somewhat like buying different parts of a computer from various stores, and building a computer by ourselves. This could also be compared to how people building a house, could buy off-the-shelf components, such as bricks, windows, and doors, rather than producing everything themselves. Static libraries usually have a .a extension, which is short for archive on Unix-like machines, and .lib extension on Microsoft Windows. Dynamic linking is the runtime linking of compiled units modules of a program. The libraries made up of such modules are called dynamic libraries or shared libraries or shared object files. These files can be identified with the extension of .so in Linux or .tll in Windows systems, where .so is short for shared object and .tll stands for dynamic linking libraries. It is somewhat like building a house in a neighborhood that shares various public properties such as an airport, a public restroom, a parking lot, a recreational park, etc. Making use of the shared libraries requires instructing the compiler or the linker to leave some stubs or references to the shared objects in the final executable, so that the operating system knows where to dynamically link at runtime. We can create a shared library file of certain pre-compiled object files or modules by passing them to a linker, with some appropriate options. Purpose or reasons for shared libraries. So why do we use shared libraries and dynamic linking? Why not just statically link everything into one executable file? Well, one reason is to avoid producing needlessly large executable files, which will waste storage space. This storage space concern, however, is largely a thing of the past because storage space today is very very cheap. The real concern is the memory usage, a much more expensive resource. Hence, the second and the most important reason for dynamic linking is to save memory when running multiple programs that make use of the same common code. When multiple programs running simultaneously all make use of the same common code, it saves memory to load only one copy of that shared code and this is exactly what modern operating systems allow us to do with shared libraries. Multiple processes all use the same shared library. The library is included in each process address space in their virtual memory but the actual code is stored just once in the physical memory. Disadvantages we should, however, note that there are some costs associated with the use of dynamic linking. The most significant one is that the application cannot be certain that all its libraries are present and that they are of the correct versions. This may give rise to dependency issues, commonly known as the dependency hell, which is also known as the ELL hell in Microsoft Windows circles. Additionally, the distribution and installation of dynamically linked applications is not as simple as for static counterparts because the application is not self-contained in a single executable file. Lastly, with static linking, 
it is enough to include those parts of the library that are directly and indirectly referenced by the target executable or target library. But, with dynamic libraries, the entire library has to be loaded into memory, as it is not known in advance which functions or modules will be invoked by the applications.